Hey guys, what are the Unexceptional Gamer? It's Feedback Friday, where I answer your questions. And uh, I thought this was a pretty good game. I got like 50 kills, and I have no attachments or perks, because I'm going for camos on this gun. Anyway, you can check it out. I know the first half sucks, the second half rocks. Let's get going. So, you Wet Noodle asks me to talk about people leaving Machinima and joining new networks. And I just a quick note before I get into it, I actually talked about this last week, but when I listened back to it, it was boring and slow, and I was long-winded and like the terrible version of me. So I cut it out. I left it on the editing room floor, but I didn't change the title or in my head it was still in there. So when I first uploaded the video for like 10 minutes, Leaving Machinima was in the title, but it wasn't some big controversy. I fixed the title as soon as I uh, was notified by it, you know, notified of the mistake by my subs. But um, uh, it was really just about me being boring, <laughs> not about uh, of any kind of objective of hiding it or something. So to talk about it, here's the deal: Machinima pays a flat rate. So you know, if Machinima makes like forty bucks for every um, thousand views that you get, then they make a giant profit. If Machinima makes like, you know, 25 cents for every thousand views that you get, then they operate at a loss. And it turns out that Machinima was operating at a loss too often. And, um, they've asked almost everyone with like a hundred thousand subs or more, like as a ball, if I were to like estimate to accept new contracts for less pay. And um, basically what happens is people say, all right, you know, well, let me compare your offer to the other offers on the market. And a lot of people are leaving. Like in the tweets, they were like, what do you think about this guy leaving? What do you think about that guy leaving? What do you think about whatever? Um, you know, it, it, just like me, I think everyone is just sort of like, okay, you know, so what other game is in town? Uh, you know, did, how, did, how do your offerings in terms of like, you know, channel support, uh, pay, um, you know, there's all sorts of things that companies offer. I keep trying to capture flags without flag jacket um, that they can offer that make them, you know, attractive compared to, um, you know, other companies. So what do I think of people leaving? That happens. You know, it's part of the game. Uh, if if you cut somebody's pay, then they're going to look for other employers. We're not employees, but, you know, the concept still holds. Um, it's no big deal. I I think that and when I, you know, if I leave and go to another network, I'll probably make even more next year than I made this year. That'll make my haters crazy. But um, dude, gotta love making haters crazy. You use colorblind assist in previous CODs. Why not this one? Also, next live stream. So um, uh, on the colorblind assist thing, Modern Warfare 3 changed the color scheme of the mini map, and to me. Friends looked like enemies from previous CODs. Modern Warfare 3 is the only one where I use colorblind assist. And to me, the colorblind assist is closer to what I considered normal than the stock colors were, which is why I ran it there. Um, it was cool that Stealth Bombers, you got a heads up for like the first half of the game, but I kept running it that way because when I ran their normal colors in the Infinity Ward series, like your friends weren't green or something and enemies weren't red and, and I found that to be... Uh, like not what I you know, it was uncomfortable for me, so uh, so I ran colorblind assist. Now I don't because the colors are back to what I consider normal. It's as simple as that. There's there's no big deal. Oh, and um, someone told me that stealth choppers you can see in colorblind assist, and I got all these tweets saying it's not true, it's true, it's not true, it's true. So it leads me to believe that under some situations you can see the stealth choppers, and some you can't. Because I had a mix. I don't know if it's by console, if it's by like sometimes. Uh, things work differently if you get it from a care package like if you earn a I think it's a death um, a war machine from a care package you can reload it by like switching to away from it and back to it whereas if you earn it normally uh, that doesn't work so I don't know what the situation is that lets you see stealth choppers with colorblind assist but sometimes you can apparently lots of people said it do you feel a certain pressure when giving advice on people and kids that it affects their lives? Yes, I do. I take it super, super seriously. Um, it's not the stuff you'd think. Like, you know, like it, the medical advice, it's usually like, well, here's where I think we are, but see a doctor. And I don't feel, maybe I should, but I usually don't feel like super bad saying like, ah, dude, you know, pimples are normal or, or something like that. Uh, or I won't take it if it's like cancer or something usually, but um, the ones that make me like really cautious are the career choices, you know, that like someone says, hey, Woody, I'm thinking about this. Should I follow my dream? That's the tricky one. You know, do you ruin his life and say, no, dude, go ahead and try to be a, a musician? Or do you ruin his life and say, Dude, you'll never make it as a musician. You should be you know, like, you know, a, a math teacher. And, you know, like, <laughs> that's the toughest thing for me. You know, 
a lot of advice you give is just, dude, go for it. You know, take a chance and, um, you know, ask her out. If you're that, look, this wasn't a good first half. I'll wait for the second. Uh, I died because of the freaking, I kept capping flags. Capping flags without flag jackets sucks, and people don't, yeah, it's dangerous. Anyway, um, so, uh, um, the, the hard thing about me giving advice is the usually questions that are related to chasing your dreams. I, it's hard to tell a guy to give up on a dream, and it's hard to tell a guy to give up on a sure thing. It's just so tricky. What do you do to have to get on Painkiller already? Well, as Lefty knows, um, Kyle's casting couch <laughs> is part of the deal. I'm just kidding. A lot of you guys probably don't know what a casting couch is. And in old Hollywood, it used to be that people who could make your career would try to get sex out of actresses. Or at least that's the rumor or whatever. Um, I don't know. It's just a joke. But um, what do we actually look for in a PKA guest? Some kind of halfway proven ability to speak into a mic and have something interesting to say as part of it. Um, I'd be lying if I didn't admit that having some sort of drawing power is part of, you know, what it, it's nice to have that in a guest, you know, it, if, um, if you're hypothetically, uh, I don't know, Freddie Wong, for example, then, you know, you know that he could just like put out a tweet or a Facebook post and introduce a lot of people to the show. So that's attractive. It's like a collab thing, you know, when, when they come on the show, you know, they get, I introduce them to all my subs and all the people that will watch it. And it would be neat if they also had, you know, something to bring to the table. But we also bring people on the show just because we think they'll be good guests. You know, that's not that unusual at all. If you, if you think about a lot of people they have on the show, you know, mostly their channels are smaller than mine. And, uh, um, it's just because we think that they're going to be good speakers, they're going to be funny, that, that everything is going to be cool. So, uh, triple. Anyway, um, that's, uh, that's the deal. Hey Woody, are you going to play competitive with T-Mart again? For you new subs, T-Mart and I used to do game battles together, and it was kind of cool, it was always intense, they were close, we'd do these call-outs, there'd be a level of stress there that, that didn't exist in previous, like, in regular videos, like just pub matches. Something about competitive, like, if you won, it really, really mattered, and if you lost, it really, really mattered, and, you know, it was interesting to watch. I want to do it again this year, and every time I talk to T-Mart, he's like, yeah, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. But the dude's in love and doesn't have the same schedule that he did, you know, back before he moved to California. He's, I think he's home, by the way. Like, he moved home again. But so it should totally be easy. And he's always telling me, like, Dad, we'll do it now. We'll do it now. You know, we're about to, we're, we're going to do it up right. It's just going to be just like the old days. But he doesn't. So feel free to tweet at T-Mart and say, I miss your competitive stuff with Woody because uh, I miss my competitive stuff with T-Mart. If I were to reach out to him, he'd say totally yes. Not right now, but soon. And, uh, you know, it, uh, that's just sort of the way it goes. You said you wanted to start doing a lot of new games. Is that a way of saying you will slowly start to fade out COD? Yeah, I don't have any plans of leaving my Call of Duty roots. How am I not paying attention to this guy behind me? Um, I, I don't have any plans of leaving my COD roots, but I do think it'd be nice to add more to my channel. I, I feel like it's kind of a one-trick pony in that... Um, you know, if you're like me, after a couple months of COD, you start wondering what else is out there. You know, wouldn't it be interesting to play a different game? Wouldn't it be cool to, you know, do this or that? You, you, you pull your head out of the hole that it's been in, you know, for whatever, December through March or February, and you're like, huh, what games did I miss while I was, you know, playing this almost exclusively? And if that's where you are too, then, um, you know, maybe you'd like to see some other games. That, that's just my thought process. So, uh, no, I don't plan to phase out COD. I plan to add to COD. And I also think I'd like to drop a lot more, like, super variety on my channel. You know, stuff maybe that isn't even gameplay. You know, become something of a YouTuber. I was going to do a commentary on this. I think I still will. But, uh, no, I'm not getting rid of COD. I'm adding to it. That's the, that's the plan for now. Where do you get the foam windscreens for your Astros? Yeah, one of the problems with Astros is, is if you like to play under like a ceiling fan, then it makes horrible noises that bother, you know, everyone you play with. And uh, I get mine from bhphotovideo.com. Uh, this is not a sponsored message. I'm not going to link it or anything. But a lot of people ask this, actually. They want to know where they can get that thing. So um, bhphotovideo.com. They sell a little, they sell a million, like, audio and video stuff. But uh, they'll have the little foam windscreens that you use. So you can do whatever you want. And uh, oh, looks like we're out of time. 52 kills, 12 deaths. That's not bad, especially considering most of those deaths were capping B-Dom in the start of the game. And, uh... 
no ammo, or I mean no perks, no uh, attachments, and I had a stealth chopper in my pocket. Too bad the game wasn't longer. Anyway, I hope you guys liked it. Bye. If you're still here, click subscribe. Someday I'll show you my sexy calves.